Well, hello, my YouTube friend. Tonight, it is quite overwhelming for me because I'm going to talk about a knife, but I'm also going to talk about a, a, a maker that happens to be a great friend of mine, Dalibor Bergam in Croatia, and also overwhelming the fact that I'm going to try also to discuss about uh, some points of physics about how to make a knife. Uh, this is Actually, something that I wanted, you know, I just visited uh, Dalibor uh, to see him building this beautiful prototype, still unnamed as we speak. Uh, hopefully, Dalibor will give him a good name anytime soon. So I was there to visit him and to watch him, you know, building that marvel that I have here in my hands. And... It was also overwhelming to be there, you know, uh, uh, we spent a lot of time there building this knife. He wanted to complete it uh, while I was there. And along the road, the road yeah, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, unfortunately, I forgot to make the video that I wanted to make uh, to have his views about how to make a knife. But I hopefully I will try to address at least a couple of points uh, that makes his knife so special because, you know, to make a knife uh, uh, requires some skills, of course, uh, but the skills can be very different. I mean, you can be a nice uh, forger, for example, make fantastic uh, uh, blades and be uh, really bad at making a knife. You can also do a great assembly uh, uh, of the parts uh, uh, and be really bad at forging. Uh, uh, and you can also, there is a, a notion that is really important when we're talking here about a folder, and that is the notion of physics. Uh, the physics are simple. I mean, it's just about, uh, you know, strength that goes on one side and the other. And the fact that the notion of physics, the strength that you put on a knife, uh, uh, this pressure here, uh, the negative pressure that you have here, the, the, the pressure that you have on the other side, makes it in a way that Either the knife is well built and will lock or will fail. That's simple as that. And those notions of physics, most of the time, unfortunately, uh, makers don't use them. So we can, you know, find uh, 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 quite frequently uh, some uh, uh, fail logs or whatever. Those notions of physics, Dalibor knows them uh, very well because, you know, he comes from a family of, uh, uh, you know, scientists, uh, uh, architects, um, you know, engineers, and he himself uh, did the, uh, studies of civil engineering. I mean, he's loving knives uh, since he was a child. That's his absolute passion, and he always wanted to make a, a great knife. And while studying, uh, uh, he used those notions, you know, of civil engineering and physics to make uh, uh, what he claims, and, and, and I agree 100% on, on, with him, uh, uh, to make a knife that, first of all, cuts and locks. Uh, because that's, to him, the most important thing. That is, that is, his main purpose is to make a knife that will cut, that will be a tool, and since it's a folder, that will lock, that will be secured. So, cutting uh, requires the skills, you know, of, uh, you know, grinding or whatever, but lock, and this is what I want to address, this is the, the notion of physics that I want to address, uh, having a good lock requires to understand some notions of physics. So, uh, having a good lock uh, for him, and those are the two points that I'm going to discuss, uh, requires a couple of things. One is to have a big pivot, of course, but that's not a notion of physics. I mean, the bigger, the better, for sure. But uh, the you want, if you want a knife to lock well, to have this stop pin here being the further away from the center of the pivot. So you see, he's using external stop pin, and we're going to talk about that later, why he's using that uh, rather than internal stop pin. So, here, this point is probably the further away from the center here of the pivot. Then again, you have another point that is important, and I'm trying to focus here. I don't know if I will be able to show it to you. This point here, you know, here, has to be also further away from the center of the pivot. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to show it to you. So you see the, the, the lock here 
is hopeful. Oh yes, you can see it here. You see that the blade tank here just touches this part of the lock. Here you see there is a void between the lock and the blade tank. You see the void that, he, that is here? And here the blade tank touches this point. So this point is exactly, I mean, you can measure it from this point to the center of the pivot will be the exact same distance from the center of the pivot to the external stop pin. So this is a line. And if you have the line like that with those points being the further away from the center of the pivot, this is how you're going to get a, a, a nice and strong lock. Uh, usually, so when you put, you know, an internal stop pin that is here, uh, this again will create a weak, uh, a weak spot here. So having a strong and big and bold pivot with those points, you know, of locking here being further away from here gives you first uh, a, a, a nice and strong lock. Then again, uh, you have the blade tang geometry. So I, I prepared for the first time in my life a little drawing here. So those are simple notions of physics. If the angle of the blade tang that you have here, okay, the angle of the blade tang, the forces, the negative pressure that you have when you baton, for example, or use the knife, you have a negative pressure that comes here. This negative pressure will be used like that, you know, and you will have, if the angle is like that, like five to oh, up to five or six degrees, you will have another pressure that will push your lock on this side because of the angle of the tank, you see? And you want this angle to be the smallest. I mean, literally, the perfect would be to have a flat part here on the tank, so the pressure here will, will be equalized with uh, uh, the pressure that you will have uh, on, on the tank. And the bigger you have here, the bigger is your angle, the bigger this angle will be here and the more pressure you will have on the lock. So, simple fact of physics. If you put a blade tang with an angle of 8 degrees, as we see and as we hear way, way, way too many times, the angle here will be dramatically uh, uh, bigger and the strength that you will have on the lock will be bigger, of course. This is simple notion of physics. You just have to open a book of physics to understand that. And if the pressure here is important, what you will get is this angle, the pressure of the lock, going there. So what will happen, simple as that, is that you're going to get a lock fail. Simple as that, because the pressure will be too important and that will bring your lock to fail on this direction. Simple as that. So you, what you want to get is to have this. Then after that, after this flat portion here, it can be whatever. I mean, even dramatic as that, like, like that. Don't make any... I mean, that doesn't cause any kind of trouble. But as long as you have a flat here, that's perfect. And up until even five or six degrees, the angle will will be tolerable, you know, uh, to, to, to prevent any lock fail. But up to six degrees, this is going to be too much. This is simple notion of physics. And this is simple, I mean, to prevent a, a, a failure. Now, why uh, using uh, external stop pin rather than, uh, you know, like internal stop pin, for example? You know, if you use an internal stop pin, that's going to create a hole here and uh, you're going to have at one point you can, you know, impact here, but on the other side that will be screwed. And if something is screwed, I mean, whenever you put a screw, uh, uh, you will create also a weak point and this will budge. Of course, even those will budge, you see, but if it budges here, that will create a movement, of course, and you will have uh, 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 side to side and uh, uh, upside down movement, sorry, uh, because in time, this stop pin, this internal stop pin will fail. Now, this also will budge, of course, that will, you know, create some movement and it will, the blade will go, you know, further on, uh, uh, on those, uh, on those recesses here. But when that will happen, the simple fact is that this lock will engage more. Simple as that. And this will prevent 
any kind of failure in time. So you see, I'm going to stop here about the notion of physics because we are, we are almost 10 minutes and I'm, I didn't discuss about the knife, but I'm going to stop it here just for you to understand how uh, uh, Daddy Bohr works in his mind. And you're going to have that in all of his knives. You can expect and you can check for those of you who have a Daddy Bohr, you can check that. So Daddy Bohr, as you know, uh, I have only five minutes now to talk about him, but you know him well. He started making knives like three years ago uh, and he's making basically integrals uh, and this one actually is a kind of hybrid uh, between the Draco he's really a claim model that was uh, very very well I mean that's the be his best model actually but the blade length is a uh, uh, kind kind of small for some person and uh, they all wanted to have a bigger one. Then he has another model that's called the Regulus, uh, but the Regulus has a kind of uh, a thinner um, a thinner blade here and he wanted something you know wide and long. So he created this prototype again without name uh, for now uh, uh, and that's the best of both worlds. I mean you have the, the length of the Regulus, the wide, uh, the, the width of the Draco, uh, uh, this is just an absolute perfect, perfect knife. Uh, he's working now with the Tormax, so everything is absolutely perfect. On this one, he made it, even for me, uh, <laughs> he made it uh, the pivot to be absolutely flush on this side and on the other one. Uh, he also uh, made me a Tanto, which is uh, the first time that he makes an American Tanto here, uh, and I adore that. And also, uh, uh, he started to make hollow grinds and dramatic hollow grinds, as you can see. And he does that absolutely perfectly well. This is CPM3V, his best steel. Uh, I oh, look at that. I mean, I absolutely love that blade. Uh, this is look at that. Look at the thickness here. You have here something that will penetrate whatever that can pry whatever you want. That can cut. I mean, it's sharp as hell here pointy as hell. This is a strong and sturdy knife uh, that, of course, it's on the big side. <laughs> Believe me, I haven't measured it, but uh, it's truly, truly on the big side. And the odds are that he's not going to make a lot of them because i telling you, I've seen him do, uh, uh, and it took him a lot, a lot, a lot of time to, uh, to achieve that absolute marvel. So, yes, uh, Oh, again, uh, as you can see, I've, <laughs> I've got the Dalibor thumb, you know, but uh, in time, you know that you have to break them a little bit uh, and in time they, they, they become really smoother. As always, he's using Teflon washers. He doesn't want to use uh, uh, bearings. And if he used bearings in time, he would probably use like a system like the IKBS uh, because the cage bearing, again, and that's also notion of physics, you have some uh, spaces between the balls uh, uh, and this space create a, a point of weakness so that uh, that can fail. Uh, the IKBS, you have, you know, all the balls, you know, align and, and uh, the lesser space, the better when it comes to, to, to strength. Uh, what can I say about this knife that you don't know? I mean, again, sorry, uh, uh, I wanted really, really, really to talk to, talk to you about uh, his views about, you know, the, this, this notion of physics that, that, that were important. For the rest, I mean, you have a lot of videos, probably, even mine on the Draco that explains how, I mean, some other notions that uh, I didn't address now. But as you can see, this is a splendid knife. I wanted, you know, this square uh, finish, not the, the contour that he does usually, you know, the structure finish. I really wanted a square one uh, for this bold and big knife. I think that it gives him uh, uh, just a fantastic uh, uh, look. And uh, look at that. I mean, what I like about it, you know, uh, the feel, I mean, the, re the the kind of curve that you have here gives you a perfect feel. The Draco stop on my pinky. Look at this one. It has that and that creates also I don't want to hurt my floor, but that creates an impeccable impact point. I'm telling you that you can use that as a skull crusher or whatever, but you know, this 
this is what uh, uh, I mean. The length that you have uh, that can bring you, you know, this impact point that that, that was, you know, uh, 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 not existing on, on on the Draco, and of course the blade length that you have uh, uh, that is way more important than my Draco or others. We are heading to the 15 minutes, and I don't want to go over that. It was a pleasure, and I hope that uh, I brought you some notions, uh, some interesting notions. Uh, and I'll catch you very soon for another video. Bye-bye, my friend. It was my pleasure.